Hi everyone, my name is Wesley, this game is Starship Evo, and this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to make um, ABBA circuits with an unlimited number of stages uh, in a really, really simple way. Uh, there's another tutorial that exists on how to do this using entirely just these little logic circuits, and it can get really complicated in a hurry, um, but it turns out there's a way simpler way, and this method also comes with a fun benefit of having a little progress bar. So these lights represent the different stages in your mechanism and you want them to occur in one order and then when you do it in reverse to happen in the opposite order. This is really useful for mechanisms that fold and stuff like that, like landing gear that can't just have every rotor and every piston activated all at once. They have to happen in a specific order and then refold themselves back at the end. Um, so this is a really fun, simple method to do that, and we can make any number of stages. Uh, the buttons are totally unnecessary as well. Those are just indicators um, that are helpful in this example, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We can build one of these in literally under a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take a piston. The next thing I'm going to do is take a switch and connect the switch to the piston. Easy peasy. We can raise and lower that. So the cool thing about uh, the logic circuits in this game is that you can use something called a query gate to read the position of the piston. So like, let's say I wanted to make, say, a six-stage mechanism. There's three, four, five, six of these things. And then we just take our linking tool and connect them all together. So now every single one of these can read what's happening on that piston. Uh, but in order for us to know whether they've been driven high or low, we're going to add some buttons, but the buttons are totally unnecessary. Normally, you would just connect um, the query gate directly to a piston or a rotor, or if you need something more complicated, you would connect it to um, a sequencer that would help interpret this high-low value into something more specific for your mechanism. But we don't need to do that in this case. We're just going to take each of these query gates and connect them to a button so that we know whether the query gate is being driven high or low. So right now, um, they're not really configured to do anything. So we've just got all these giving data to the query gates, and let's set things with the query gate. So we know the piston can be anywhere between 0 and 2. So let's take this one and make it 0.1. We'll take this next one and make it, uh, say, 0.5. And these aren't going to be perfectly spaced. I haven't done the math. We'll make that one 1. Uh, we'll make this one 1.2, say, and we'll make this one uh, 1.5. And we'll make the last one 1.99, just um, under the two uh, the two meter limit, so that when it goes into its full extension, it'll still trigger the last one. So now let's take a look at those buttons and see what happens. Now this is moving really fast because our piston is at full speed. So what we're going to do is take it from 50% down to say 13%. And here we go. You can see it; they all activate in a row. But when you do it the other way it all happens in reverse order. And so you would replace those buttons with whatever the proper destination is for the mechanism that you want to control. And in terms of turning this into a progress bar, you'll really just put a painted brick on the end and dress it up however you like. Um, here we can go boop. And, you know, there's any number of tricks you could do to hide the mechanism. I'll leave that to your discretion. And we can further adjust the speed. We can take it down to, say, 3% or lower and it'll go nice and slow. And you can adjust the values on the query gates to space them out however you need to so that each piece of the mechanism has an appropriate amount of time to unfold. So your next question might be, yeah, but what if I don't want to have this giant piston sticking up? Um, oh, by the way, sorry, this brings me into another one of the advantages of this mechanism that isn't present in the purely logic gate-based version, which is that you can hit the switch midway through and it'll reverse without getting stuck or glitching into any kind of weird state. It'll just keep on folding and unfolding itself however it's supposed to. But anyway, if you don't want to have this thing extending and retracting 100%, what you can do is just plop down a uh, sequencer in between the switch and the um, piston. And let's say we wanted to have the amount of extension or make it even less you could just set that to one meter or sorry set your off state to one meter your uh, what am i trying to say off is zero on is one and then adjust the values in here to all be lower than one so we'll just do that really quick um oh point let's say two oh point four oh point six 
0.8 and 0.99, sure. These are kind of just rough values. But now you're getting the exact same resolution, but you don't have to have the piston move as far. Now it's only going one meter instead of two and everything still works fine. Um, so this is still moving pretty fast for a complicated multi-stage mechanism, but the nice thing is that you can go over here and use, for example, a rotor, which has a full 360 degree range and it can go really slow. So that was still fairly fast, but if we were to take this down to like, you know, five, six percent, you can see we have plenty of time in between each stage in that mechanism. So in addition to pistons and rotors, you can also use a slider. Here's an example of that. The only problem is that when you press F on the slider, you don't get options. It just activates it, so you can't slow it down or do anything to it. So I don't really recommend this slider. Next up, you might be wondering if you can use um, a hinge. And yes, to an extent, but these query gates are unable to read negative values. And when this thing's tilted to the left, it has a value of negative 90. So all these stages aren't really working. So if you wanted to do this, you would have to put a sequencer gate between the switch and the hinge and limit it to its positive range between 0 and 90 degrees degrees and have all your query gates reading only that but I thought it would be cool to have a sort of speedometer thing but that can only have a 90 degree range um, okay so one other option that's available to you is uh, to use if you really wanted to limit the number of child entities you could use a piston and remove the head and you can still technically get it to work um, by linking it and doing everything like we said before uh, but it, it gets glitchy and eventually it'll crash your game so I don't recommend it but it would be interesting if we had a block that was just had numerical values on it um, that could perform the same role as like a piston and be read by query gates without actually creating a needless child entity so what I did here was to set up a rotor which you know has nothing attached to it it's only there to give us values for our query gates to read and I set up just an arbitrary, like Dr. Seuss, 10 stage mechanism just to demonstrate that this works even with a crazy number of stages. And it's a little glitchy because it collides with the platform, but here you can see the thing in action. You've got the last stage all going over there, the whole thing. You can see every time one of the lights goes off, that corresponding stage in the mechanism goes off because each of those query gates is triggering both the button, just for reference, and also uh, something in the mechanism itself. But you really don't need the buttons. They're only there for reference. And you can make these um, circuits like extremely compact. And it'll still work just fine. I say just fine, but since I didn't really engineer this in any kind of thoughtful way, it collides with the platform a lot, so not everything works great. But you get the idea. Even if you had some insanely intricate uh, landing gear, some kind of uh, you know ship docking type deal, um, it can all happen really easily with something like this. And if you were to configure it to appear as a little loading screen or like a little progress bar in your cockpit, I think that could definitely add a lot of interesting flavor. So I'm hoping this method will catch on. And uh, if you enjoy it, please feel free to leave a comment. There's no Steam Workshop submission here. I'm just uh, sharing a technique. And I hope you like it. And let me know if you have any questions. Take care. Bye-bye.